Hi, I'm Michael Sinoff, founder and CEO of HardToFindSeminars.com. For the last five years, I've interviewed the world's best business and marketing minds. Now my challenge is to build the world's largest free resource for online, downloadable audio business interviews. I've learned a lot in the last five years, and today I'm going to show you the skills you need to survive. My first royalty check was $3,400. The second one was $8,400. The third one was $34,000. The fourth one was $84,000. And that was per month. It grew up to $125,000 per week. I mean, it was just incredible. So being $100,000 in debt, I put a goal in my mind. I need to get that $100,000 back. And I was earning well over $100,000 per week. Ultimately, it became the number one product in the world. Hi there, it's Michael Sinoff with Michael Sinoff's HardToFindSeminars.com. I've got a three-hour interview with a guy who sold over $400 million worth of exercise equipment. This is an amazing journey, an amazing interview. Let me tell you a little bit more about him. I'm pleased to introduce to you John Abdo. John Abdo is regarded around the world as an authority on motivation, health, fitness, and athletic conditioning. He was a former Olympic trainer. He's trained numerous Olympic and world-class athletes, including speed skater Bonnie Blair. She was a multiple gold medal recipient. He was recently introduced into the National Fitness Hall of Fame. From 1985 to 97, John produced and hosted his own weekly syndicated television series called Training and Nutrition, where he interviewed geniuses in all the authorities on health and nutrition. He had an audience reaching over 50 million households. He established himself as one of the most visible motivational educators for legions of athletes, fitness enthusiasts, coaches nationwide. Many of John's programming and commercial advertising techniques were his own self-created marketing creations, and they form many branches in DRTV and educational programming. Today, John has over 3 million people in 120 countries using his products, training systems, or adhering to his motivational principles. He's a highly in-demand editorial consultant. He makes regular contributions for popular magazines like Men's Health, Details, Outside, Women's World, and even Muscle and Fitness. This is one of the most dedicated guys I've ever met to helping other inventors. He conducts seminars to educate and motivate inventors on both what to do and what not to do. In 1999, John was nearly bankrupt and about $100,000 in debt. By the end of 2001, John's products and services had generated nearly $400 million. If you watch television infomercials, you may even be familiar with his product called the Ab Doer. With nearly $75 million in media expenditure, his invention was voted number one product in 2001. He was outselling all the other top four products combined in his category. John has also been the recipient of the Best Fitness Presenter Award by the Electronic Retailing Association for generating the most revenue from his live and pre-recorded television appearances. On live shopping channel alone, John has generated over $30 million in sales and scored the single day record of $2.5 million in sales. John's latest inventions include the bun and thigh doer, contour weights, waist to waist conditioning system, and many more. What makes John so unique and valuable is that he's not only the product inventor, he's also the product's on-air spokesperson. He's the program developer, he's the strategic marketer, and much, much more. In the next three hours, you're going to hear in detail about how John got started, his humble beginnings, his challenges on the way to ultimate success. You're going to hear John reveal secrets that he's never revealed before about the insides of the television infomercial industry. You're going to gain knowledge and access to John's contacts through a unique conglomeration of contacts that he's built over the years, and he's going to show you how to use his contacts to give you a better chance in developing and creating and marketing your own invention through television. Get ready. Let's get going. Without inventors, 
you wouldn't be sitting on the chair that you're sitting on. I wouldn't be talking on the phone I'm talking on. I wouldn't be able to do my morning business. I wouldn't be able to do anything without inventors. Everything that you could see right now and for the rest of your day is a thought turned into a thing. We need inventors. We need the ideas. The thing is, the idea people aren't the marketing people most of the time. So I have always seen and shared a commonality with all inventors. We don't know who to trust. We don't know where to go. We've been ripped off before. We don't know if we're going to get paid on all our units. We don't know if we're making the right decision. It's fear, 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 fear. So I'm here to protect inventors. I'm here to tell inventors I love them. They're my brothers and sisters, and I'm encouraging them because I thrive as well as everyone thrives on innovation. Without inventors, the world would not be as fast, as safe, as productive, as happy as it could be, as it should be. Inventors is what makes the world tick. That is so true. I mean, I'm sitting here in front of my computer. I'm looking at my computer. I'm looking at my lamp. I'm looking at a flashlight, a pair of scissors, my video camera, this label writer, label machine, my calculator, my staple or scotch tape, and a pen. And all of these things are inventions. And I think it's really important for the listeners here to get an idea where you came from and how this all started because all your learning was based on your journey from the humble beginnings and the struggles and all the way through. So if the listeners will bear with us and listen to your story from the beginning, I think it's really going to benefit them to see how you got there. And we're going to talk about this alliance that you've set up in detail towards the end of the interview. But let's take the listener on a journey. Let's start from the beginning. Is that okay? Yes. What sport were you training in for your Olympics? My specific sport was Olympic weightlifting. And Olympic weightlifting is not a very popular American sport, but it's a fascinating sport. A lot of people describe it as doing gymnastics with weights. The lifts are called the snatch and the clean and jerk, and you're actually flipping weights up overhead. And it takes a lot of technical skill, not just strength. There's a lot of strong guys that lose to the technical guys. So it took strength, it took skill, a lot of training, a lot of precision. But the thing I loved about it, in addition to the specific weight training techniques for Olympic weightlifting, and there's two other sports, bodybuilding, which you pose and you just show off your body. That's not an Olympic sport, and that's very popular, but it's more cosmetic. And powerlifting. Powerlifting is the bench press, the squat, and the deadlift. That's not an Olympic sport. Even though it does require a lot of technique, it's mostly known for its brute strength. Olympic weightlifting is an Olympic sport, and being an aspiring Olympic athlete, it exposed me to athletes and coaches and training principals around the world. And it was just fantastic because the techniques with that allowed me to do what we call remedial or adjunct training, which took you outside of the weight training environment where we did plyometrics, we did field strength training, running bleachers, jumping, all types of flexibility exercises exercises. On our days of rest, we had what we call active rest. We played basketball or volleyball or things like that. So as athletes, we were constantly active. And then when I decided to start coaching other athletes outside my specific sport, the great thing about it, I started learning that, again, a nine-year-old female figure skater was benefiting from these techniques because they're techniques that anybody could use. So you don't have to specifically compete at the sport I was competing in. For instance, if I played football and I taught football techniques, those techniques may only be good for football players, but they may not be good for female figure skaters. The weightlifting techniques, along with other strength training, injury prevention, injury rehabilitation techniques, which I also studied and applied, again, Michael, were advantageous for all kinds of athletes. Hi, it's Michael Sinoff with HardToFindSeminars.com. Thanks for watching this video. You know, many of my interviews last 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, sometimes even up to two and a half hours long. They're actual mini seminars, and you've just listened to a short sample of just one of over 117 hours of exciting, hard-hitting, mind-blowing interviews on how to make money in direct mail, advertising, copywriting. I assure you, there is not a resource anywhere on the internet or on the planet that comes close to the free information I provide at hardtofindseminars.com. So go right now to hardtofindseminars.com and you'll have free access to 117 hours of audio interviews with typed word-for-word -word downloadable transcripts and downloadable MP3 files. Please browse some more of the videos or go right directly to hardtofindseminars.com. Thanks for watching.